do you become a multi-planet civilization or not? And if you don't, it's simply a matter of time before something happens on your planet that causes us to die out. For centuries, humanity has looked to the stars, yearning to know if we're truly alone in the vast universe. Now a discovery from our pioneering Voyager 1 spacecraft has captured the scientific community's attention. Voyager 1, hurtling through interstellar space billions of miles from Earth, has picked up signals from distant stars, seemingly directed at our tiny blue planet. But who is sending these signals, and what message are they trying to convey? Join us as we explore how Voyager 1 has detected many stars sending unusual signals to Earth. Since 2018, scientists have been baffled by a mysterious signal arriving every 22 minutes, defying all explanations. Some researchers even speculate it might originate from an unknown civilization. This mysterious radio signal wasn't discovered by a professional astronomer, but by Tyrone Odery, an undergraduate student at Curtin University in Australia. Tyrone was working on a routine project, analyzing old data from the southern sky, searching for unusual blinking radio signals. His persistence paid off when he found a signal from 28 that emitted radio waves toward Earth like a lighthouse beam. Thrilled by his discovery, Tyrone shared it with his mentor, radio astronomer Natasha Hurley Walker. Natasha plunged into the research, analyzing various frequency data, but they hit a brick wall. Just when they thought it was another dead end, Natasha noticed a crucial pattern. The signal repeated every 18 minutes. This breakthrough was significant, but as they prepared for further study, the signal abruptly vanished after just three months, leaving them with more questions than answers. Not giving up, Natasha and her team diligently scanned the skies, hoping for a breakthrough. Months passed without any promising leads, leading to a sense of frustration and readiness to abandon their search. Then out of the blue, a new signal appeared, catching their attention. This signal blinked persistently for a solid five minutes before vanishing, only to reappear exactly 22 minutes later. The mystery deepened as they wondered if this signal was connected to an earlier 18-minute occurrence. To crack this puzzle, Natasha revisited the old radio data from that region. As they delved deeper into the archives, they made a remarkable discovery. These signals weren't new. They had been silently transmitting toward Earth for the past 35 years. In 1988, Indian and American telescopes detected these signals, but they were overshadowed by a deluge of other data at the time. This revelation brought a wave of excitement to the Space Explorers team. It meant they could now begin to calculate the distance of this enigmatic object from Earth. After rigorous calculations, they determined that it lay an astonishing 15,000 light years away a vast distance even in cosmic terms. However, the true identity of this object remained elusive. Walker and his team meticulously compared it to every known radio-emitting celestial body in existence, yet its origins remained shrouded in mystery. The signals continued to appear on NASA's screens every 22 minutes, frustratingly ending with a match-not-found message. The scientists dubbed it J183910. Speculations ran wild among the team. Some pondered whether these signals could be of extraterrestrial origin. Perhaps this was the long-awaited signal that the search for extraterrestrial intelligence SETI had been hoping for. SETI, a project spanning over five decades, tirelessly seeks evidence of life beyond our planet. They constantly scan the cosmos for radio waves, laser pulses, and other anomalous signals, hoping to unravel the mysteries of the universe and possibly establish communication with beings from distant worlds. While the notion might seem thrilling, it's crucial to exercise caution before leaping to conclusions. Without concrete evidence, it remains speculative. Additionally, there exist more plausible explanations, most likely stemming from a natural phenomenon. Two theories stand out in this regard. Firstly, consider the pulsar theory. Picture a colossal star in the vastness of space dwarfing our sun. At the end of their stellar odyssey, these massive stars undergo a dazzling finale known as a supernova. During this cataclysmic event, the star's core implodes, compressing all its material into an incredibly dense space termed a neutron star. Among these neutron stars, some possess extraordinary attributes, 
We dub them pulsars. Their moniker originates from their pulsating emissions, akin to a cosmic lighthouse. These pulsars boast immensely powerful magnetic fields, far surpassing Earth's magnets. This magnetic vigor propels beams of energy outward, while their rapid rotation causes these beams to flicker like celestial beacons. However, the enigmatic signal we've detected exhibits similarities to pulsars, yet deviates in crucial aspects. Typically, pulsars follow a predictable trajectory, gradually diminishing in activity until they cease emitting radio signals. In contrast, our mysterious signal persists, surpassing the expected pulsar behavior. This anomaly hints that it might not conform to the standard pulsar model, or perhaps it isn't a pulsar at all. Another intriguing hypothesis is the magnetar theory. Magnetars represent another variant of neutron stars, akin to supercharged pulsars, boasting even more potent magnetic fields and slightly longer pulsation cycles. It's plausible that these intensified attributes account for our signal's enduring intensity. However, upon scrutinizing the data, we observe discrepancies with typical magnetar signatures. Magnetars emit not just radio waves, but also intense X-rays due to their heightened energy levels. Yet our signal exclusively emitted radio waves, leading us to rule out both pulsar and magnetar classifications. The signal's peculiar behavior suggests an origin outside conventional astronomical phenomena, hinting at an unknown cosmic entity awaiting exploration. The final theory delves into the intriguing concept of the so-called dwarf pulsar, which admittedly sounds a bit whimsical. Picture a star that blinks with light flashes akin to pulsars, albeit at a slower pace. Normally, white dwarfs are remnants of smaller stars, lacking the intense blinking due to their weaker magnetic fields compared to pulsars. However, when a white dwarf gains substantial mass nearing the size of our sun, it transforms, becoming super dense and initiating pulsations fueled by a robust magnetic field, akin to pulsars. Here's where it gets fascinating. White dwarfs are primarily composed of electrons, unlike pulsars, which are rich in neutrons. When these charged electrons interact with a magnetic field, they emit periodic bursts of light, akin to rhythmic dances of cosmic particles. These luminous flashes occur at intervals ranging from 100 to 1,000 seconds. Now recall our signal's periodicity of 22 minutes, or 1,320 seconds slightly longer than the typical white dwarf pulsar, but remarkably close. This aligns more closely with reality, making it the most credible explanation thus far. For example, fast radio bursts, FRBs, are a type of mysterious signals we've been detecting. Picture them as quick, intense bursts of energy in the form of radio waves. They pack a tremendous punch. In fact, they can sometimes outshine entire galaxies. To put it in perspective, these bursts release as much energy in a few milliseconds as our sun does in three whole days. It's quite astonishing. These bursts occur all across the sky at significant frequencies, although some have been spotted with lower frequencies. Every day we detect around 10,000 random FRBs in the sky. Some of them repeat, but most occur just once and vanish forever. Unfortunately, they typically last for a fraction of a second, and by the time their energy reaches us, it's a thousand times weaker than a mobile phone signal from the moon. This is why, despite their brightness, there's still a lot we don't comprehend about them. Scientists are still grappling with understanding the origins of these FRBs. They could be emanating from various sources like magnetars, colliding stars, merging galaxies, or even white dwarfs. As these bursts traverse space, they gather information about the cosmic environments they pass through such as interstellar gas clouds. While the idea of FRBs being messages from extraterrestrial beings is intriguing, it's highly unlikely. There are simply too many of them occurring daily across the sky, and their sources must be incredibly energetic themselves, surpassing even entire galaxies in strength. One fascinating occurrence related to space signals involves Voyager 1, which has been voyaging through interstellar space for over 45 years. Recently, it started transmitting strange signals back to Earth, perplexing scientists at NASA. Despite its age, there are no signs of the probe malfunctioning. It's still operational, defying all expectations. Voyager 1, launched by NASA on September 5, 1977, had a primary mission to explore Jupiter and Saturn. 
Initially anticipated to last around five years, Voyager 1 surpassed all predictions, continuing to function effectively and providing invaluable data far longer than anyone imagined. Voyager 1 has journeyed through the vastness of space for over 46 years, a remarkable feat that continues to enrich our understanding of the cosmos. Its contributions to scientific knowledge are profound, spanning from revealing stunning images of Jupiter and Saturn to unraveling mysteries in the far reaches of our solar system. Among its notable achievements, Voyager 1 transmitted a treasure trove of photographs capturing the majestic beauty and intricate details of Jupiter and Saturn back to Earth. These images, now publicly accessible on NASA's website, have captivated the imagination of millions, offering glimpses into the awe-inspiring landscapes and dynamic atmospheres of these gas giants. But Voyager's impact goes beyond visual marvels. It played a pivotal role in the discovery of previously unknown moons orbiting Jupiter, expanding our understanding of the planet's celestial entourage. Furthermore, Voyager unveiled a hidden system of rings encircling Jupiter, adding another layer of complexity to our knowledge of this gas giant. One of Voyager's significant revelations was about Jupiter's iconic red spot, long believed to be a colossal storm. Through Voyager's lens, scientists confirmed that this enigmatic feature is indeed a massive, superfast storm, deepening our comprehension of Jupiter's dynamic weather patterns. As Voyager ventured beyond the boundaries of Neptune's orbit, it delved into the realm of interstellar plasma, providing crucial data that advanced our understanding of this exotic medium. Its findings not only validated its scientific worth, but also underscored the invaluable role of space exploration in unraveling the mysteries of the universe. With each milestone surpassed, Voyager 1 eagerly embarked on its next mission, the exploration of the Kuiper Belt and the heliosphere. The Kuiper Belt, a vast ring of icy bodies extending from Neptune to about 50 astronomical units from the Sun, presents a cosmic fabric akin to the asteroid belt but on a grander scale, enriching our insights into the outer reaches of our solar system. Meanwhile, the heliosphere, an expansive region surrounding the sun where solar wind pressure meets inter interstellar gas pressure, poses complex scientific puzzles. Voyager's data from this region, though challenging to grasp for many, plays a pivotal role in deciphering the dynamics of interstellar space, offering invaluable insights into the cosmic dance between stars and the vast voids between them. The Voyager probe has captured over 60 images of our solar system. From a distance of more than 4 billion miles, scientists stitch these images together to create a stunning mosaic. One iconic picture from this collection is known as the pale blue dot. As you might guess, that tiny dot in the vast darkness is our home, Earth, as seen through Voyager's lenses. This image serves as a poignant reminder of our planet's smallness and its incredible value and vulnerability. However, Voyager 1's mission goes beyond photography. It carries a message from humanity to any potential civilizations it may encounter. Have you heard of the Voyager Golden Records? These are like time capsules filled with sounds and images that represent us. Imagine a treasure trove containing greetings in 55 languages, from ancient tongues to those no longer spoken. Music lovers would rejoice in the diverse tunes, including classical compositions by Beethoven and Mozart, alongside folk melodies from across the globe. There's even a touch of the blues with songs by legends like Louis Armstrong and Chuck Berry. But it's not just music. The records include snippets of human voices, natural sounds, and recordings of animals. They also feature speeches by notable figures like Kurt Waldheim, a former UN Secretary General, and Jimmy Carter, a former US President. These recordings are like friendly waves from Earth to the vast unknown. To make sense of these records, Voyager's creators thought ahead. They included a needle akin to a turntable's stylus for playing the audio. And for those unfamiliar with Earth's languages, they provided a guide on translating sounds into images. They even encoded Earth's coordinates using a map of pulsars and celestial beacons that helped navigate the spacecraft through the galaxy. To protect this precious cargo from the harshness of space, the records were housed in a sturdy aluminum case coated with gold. This golden shield shields the records from radiation and cosmic dust, ensuring they endure the eons-long voyage of Voyager 1. 
Voyager 1 is currently cruising four astronomical units away from Earth, roughly translating to a staggering 14.2 billion miles. This makes it not just the most distant human-made object, but also a record breaker, snatching the title from its predecessor, the Pioneer 10 mission, back in 1998. What's even more interesting is that Voyager 1 outpaced its sibling, Voyager 2, which launched just a fortnight earlier. It's like the faster, older brother zipping through space at an impressive speed of 9.7 meters per second, which is a jaw-dropping 35,000 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, even the fastest sports cars on Earth can only dream of reaching 305 miles per hour. Voyager's velocity is simply mind-boggling. Right now, Voyager 1 is on a cosmic road trip toward the Oort Cloud, a mysterious zone of icy objects surrounding our solar system. While astronomers haven't laid eyes on this cloud yet, it's on their cosmic maps, much like how black holes were once just theoretical marvels. Sadly, Voyager 1 won't be swinging by for a solar system reunion. It's on a one-way journey, though it promises to keep in touch with us until at least 2025. After that, it's a farewell as it ventures into the unknown, where our signals can't reach. In about 300 years, it'll reach the edge of the Oort cloud. Then, in a distant 30,000 years, far beyond our lifetimes, it'll bid farewell to our solar neighborhood. If all goes well during its epic journey, Voyager 1 could encounter a red dwarf star called Gliese 445 in the giraffe constellation in another 10,000 years or so. Its trajectory might just make it a cosmic nomad, roaming the vastness of the Milky Way galaxy. During its journey in December last year, Voyager 1 encountered an intriguing event. A puzzling hiccup occurred in its Attitude Articulation and Control System, AACS, which is crucial for keeping the spacecraft on track and ensuring its communication with Earth stays strong. The data from OACS didn't align with Voyager 1's intended path, creating a bit of confusion, much like someone getting a tad lost in the vastness of space. What's captivating is that despite this, Voyager 1's signal back to Earth remained robust, staying firmly connected to us. This mystery added an extra layer of intrigue to Voyager 1's story. Suzanne Dodd, the guardian of Voyager 1, and its companion Voyager 2, delves into this fascinating issue. She explains that encountering mysteries isn't uncommon as these intrepid spacecraft near the culmination of their incredible voyages. They've outlasted expectations, surpassing the dreams of their creators, enduring the rigors of space and showcasing human ingenuity. The team is diligently working to unravel the AACS puzzle. Solving it could involve tweaking the spacecraft's software or utilizing backup systems offering optimism for future space endeavors. Voyager 1 has tackled challenges before, such as repairing its thrusters in 2017. Engineers displayed remarkable ingenuity by repurposing old thrusters to keep Voyager operational. They addressed the AACS anomaly by identifying a data routing error and rectifying it, redirecting data to the correct system. After thorough troubleshooting, NASA's engineering team pinpointed a cosmic ray as the culprit behind a memory bit flip in Voyager 1's system, leading to computational confusion. By remotely reprogramming the flight data system to bypass the affected memory segment, engineers restored normal operations. This ingenious fix underscores the remarkable skill and adaptability of the team overseeing these venerable spacecraft from billions of miles away. Voyager 1's triumphs echo the innovative spirit seen in Dyson's musings on Dyson Swarms. Just as engineers overcame obstacles like cosmic rays causing system errors in Voyager 1, Freeman Dyson's concept of a Dyson Swarm arose from a blend of imagination and scientific rigor. While NASA's team navigated cosmic challenges to restore Voyager's functionality, Dyson envisioned civilizations harnessing star energy through ingenious structures like Dyson Swarms, each orbiting stars with precision akin to Voyager's delicate maneuvers through space. In case you're not familiar with Dyson Swarms, they originate from an old science fiction story called Star Maker. This book dives deep into humanity's future over billions of years, suggesting an intriguing concept, a structure that could harness a star's energy directly. This idea took flight in the 1960s when Freeman Dyson, a British mathematician and theoretical physicist, delved into it scientifically and mathematically. A Dyson Swarm, distinct from a Dyson Sphere, 
consists of individual structures orbiting stars to harness their resources. Freeman Dyson's 1960s paper proposed detecting these megastructures via their infrared emissions, which would differ from natural stellar emissions. One example, the Tabby star KIC 8462852, drew attention due to its unusual dimming, initially thought to indicate a megastructure. However, further studies revealed the dimming likely results from a dust cloud rather than an alien structure. Recent studies using data from telescopes like the Gyre and WISE identified stars with unusual infrared brightness, suggesting potential Dyson swarms. For instance, seven red dwarfs within 900 light years exhibited infrared emissions 60 times higher than expected, indicating possible superstructures or natural phenomena. Another study found 53 stars up to 6,500 light years away with similar anomalies. These stars' unusual emissions could stem from natural causes such as planetary disks or stellar collisions, rather than technosignatures. Both studies stress the need for further investigation to confirm these findings. Advanced instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope are essential for follow-up observations to discern the true nature of these stars. While the notion of extraterrestrial intelligence is captivating, Scientific rigor demands exploring natural explanations first. These intriguing anomalies offer potential insights into the universe's complexities, awaiting further exploration and analysis to reveal their true origins. For centuries, black holes have captivated our imaginations. These enormous cosmic objects, with gravity so strong that even light cannot escape them, have long been mysterious. But Bill Nye, the iconic science communicator, has just dropped a bombshell. He believes we may have discovered a gateway to another universe within a black hole. This isn't science fiction. Nye is basing his claim on recent scientific advancements. Could this gateway lead to parallel dimensions, alternate realities, or even civilizations beyond our wildest imagination? Our comprehension of black holes has evolved significantly over time. While many of us may believe we have a basic understanding of them, the reality is that our knowledge is far from complete. Let's go back to 1916 when Albert Einstein introduced his groundbreaking general relativity theory. This theory proposed the existence of black holes, but it remained purely theoretical at that point, an intriguing concept lacking empirical evidence. It would be over 50 years before substantial proof surfaced, fundamentally altering our cosmic perspective. In the 1960s, while studying the Cygnus constellation, Astronomers noticed an unusually bright blue star emitting intense X-rays. These X-rays seemed to orbit around an unseen massive object with a strong gravitational pull. This mysterious entity was later identified as Cygnus X-1. It actively absorbed X-rays from its neighboring star, ensnared by its gravitational force. This observation was pivotal, leading to the term black hole and validating that they were more than theoretical constructs from Einstein's equations. The discovery of Cygnus X-1 was groundbreaking in astrophysics, adding a new enigmatic dimension to our understanding of the cosmos. Situated approximately 6,000 light years away in the Cygnus constellation, this black hole is not only 14 times more radiant than our sun, but also exerts a gravitational force so intense that even light cannot escape it. The concept of a black hole is both captivating and somewhat fearsome. A space region where gravity is so overpowering that once something ventures too close, it becomes irreversibly drawn in, never to re-emerge. This discovery sparked a global scientific endeavor to unravel the mysteries of these formidable cosmic entities. The exploration of black holes has led to numerous other revelations each unveiling more about these dominant yet silent forces shaping the universe. This prompts the question, are we just scratching the surface or is this the beginning of a deeper cosmic exploration? After the groundbreaking discovery of Cygnus X-1, scientists became intensely curious, initiating a widespread search for more black holes. There was speculation that our Milky Way might harbor a multitude of them, Estimates even suggested up to 100 million within our galaxy. However, accurately counting them poses challenges. Black holes are naturally elusive, often invisible against the vastness of space unless they interact with nearby matter. 
This invisibility makes studying them both crucial and difficult. Current understanding indicates there are several million black holes spread throughout the Milky Way, making them a significant and undeniable part of our galactic environment. The exploration of these enigmatic entities begins with their defining characteristic, gravity. Black holes exert such immense gravitational forces that anything approaching too closely is irresistibly drawn in and compressed to an extreme, reaching a point of infinite density known as a singularity. In simpler terms, black holes can be likened to cosmic vacuum cleaners, devouring everything in their vicinity from tiny cosmic particles to entire stars. This gravitational dominance makes black holes both captivating and frightening subjects of scientific inquiry. Intensive research into black holes has revealed some unsettling truths. One particular alarming concept is the theoretical fate of anything unfortunate enough to cross a black hole's event horizon. The gravitational forces would stretch the object lengthwise while compressing it sideways, a phenomenon termed spaghettification by astrophysicists. This process would elongate the object into a thin strand before ultimately tearing it apart. While this might seem like science fiction, it's a scientifically supported consequence of black hole physics, albeit occurring over a slow and excruciating period. Hence, it is evident that human travel into a black hole is not recommended. Fortunately, the nearest known black hole is sufficiently distant to not pose an immediate threat. However, this raises a broader concern about the potential risks black holes might present to Earth. Given their widespread existence in our galaxy and their potential for catastrophic events, it is natural to wonder about the possibility of encountering danger. Nevertheless, the actual situation provides some reassurance. Due to the vast distances involved in the specific cosmic circumstances necessary for a black hole to impact our solar system directly, the risk remains minimal. The immense power and unpredictability of black holes continue to fascinate both scientists and the public, driving ongoing exploration and research to unravel more about these celestial phenomena. Each discovery not only enhances our comprehension of the universe, but also underscores the incredible forces at work within it, motivating us to delve deeper into the unknown. Now shifting to the discussion of black hole exploration, despite the distance of the nearest black hole, located 500 light years away from Earth, it still piques our curiosity and raises significant questions. In 2021, a significant milestone in astronomy occurred when scientists successfully captured the first clear image of a black hole, specifically the M87 black hole. This particular black hole became a focal point of study over multiple nights, during which a series of photographs were taken. Each image contributed incremental insights, aiding researchers in piecing together a more comprehensive understanding of this mysterious celestial entity. By combining these images, scientists constructed a detailed composite picture that unveiled many aspects of the black hole's structure. Contrary to common belief, a black hole is not merely a space. It possesses intricate layers that contribute to its enigmatic nature. To fully grasp what lies within a black hole, one must navigate through its layered composition. The journey into a black hole commences at the event horizon, often termed as the point of no return. Once any form of matter, or even light, crosses this boundary, it gets pulled irreversibly towards the core of the black hole. This initial layer conceals the intricate complexities lying beyond. Further inside, the second layer, known as the photon sphere, encircles the black hole. Here, light bends around the black hole, caught in an endless orbit due to the intense gravitational force. The light that enters this sphere cannot escape, contributing to the black hole's increasing mass and enigma. Beyond the photon sphere lies the heart of the black hole, the singularity. At this point, space-time itself collapses and matter is condensed to an infinite density. The conventional laws of physics cease to hold sway in this extreme environment rendering predictions nearly impossible. The singularity marks a realm where the conventional concepts of space and time lose their traditional function, with conventional physics providing a scant explanation for the phenomena that unfold. This unpredictability and distinctiveness make each black hole an intriguing subject of exploration. With significant potential variations, even among black holes sharing a basic structural framework, 
These differences present unique challenges and offer insights into the fundamental nature of space-time gravity and the cosmos. The study of black holes diverges from the straightforward examination of other celestial bodies like stars or planets. With most cosmic objects, scientists can employ telescopes to directly observe and collect detailed information. However, black holes differ in that they do not emit observable light or any form of radiation. Instead, researchers must rely on indirect methods, such as analyzing the radiation emitted by material swirling around and falling into the black hole, or by observing the effects on nearby stars and gas clouds. According to Bill Nye, the extreme nature of black holes presents a significant challenge for scientific study. Unlike sending a spacecraft like NASA's Voyager into space, probing a black hole is impossible due to its intense gravitational forces. Once an object crosses the black hole's event horizon, the point of no return, it faces certain destruction. The gravitational pull at this boundary is so immense that it would stretch and disintegrate any spacecraft, making direct exploration unfeasible with current technology. Moreover, the cost of sending probes on such one-way journeys would be impractical. Therefore, scientists must observe black holes from a distance, analyzing their effects on surrounding objects to deduce their characteristics. Each black hole is unique, adding to the complexity of the study. Within black holes, conventional physical laws break down, distorting concepts like time and space. The region beyond the event horizon remains largely speculative, challenging traditional scientific approaches that rely on observable phenomena and predictable laws. The individuality of each black hole further complicates study, necessitating the continual development of new theories and models. Despite these challenges, the pursuit of understanding black holes is vital for pushing the boundaries of modern physics and astronomy. It requires innovative thinking and indirect observation methods, offering glimpses into the universe's most extreme conditions and deepening our knowledge of fundamental cosmic laws. According to Nye, to gain a deep understanding of black holes, we must contemplate their true nature. Let's explore the various theories attempting to elucidate these enigmatic entities. Despite the formidable challenges associated with studying black holes, scientists are making significant strides. The field of black hole research is vibrant with activity and constant discoveries. Each new theory devised by researchers contributes to our comprehension of the intricate and captivating characteristics of black holes. These theories span from the processes of black hole formation to their profound impact on the cosmic environment. Each novel concept brings us closer to unraveling the mysteries surrounding these cosmic phenomena. One widely accepted theory regarding the formation of black holes involves the demise of massive stars. As a star exhausts its nuclear fuel, it loses the ability to counterbalance its gravitational pull. This leads to the star collapsing under its gravity reducing its size drastically while increasing its density. Should the collapsing star possess sufficient mass, it will continue to compress until it forms an infinitely dense point known as a singularity, marking the birth of a black hole. To delve further into the nature of black holes, scientists, including those at NASA, have directed their attention to the cores of distant galaxies. For instance, a study focused on the galaxy M87 where astronomers observed a tremendously powerful vortex of intensely hot hydrogen gas rotating at speeds exceeding 1.2 million miles per hour. Typically, such high-speed rotation would disperse the gas outward. However, at the center of M87, this dispersion did not occur. Researchers inferred that only an immensely massive object possessing a gravitational force capable of counteracting the dispersal forces could maintain the integrity of this spinning gas disk. They estimated this object's mass to be equivalent to billions of suns, strongly indicating it was a supermassive black hole. Yet the notion that black holes originate from massive star collapses and exert influential gravitational forces on their surroundings represents just one facet of ongoing research. Black holes are also believed to play pivotal roles in galactic dynamics potentially contributing to star formation and influencing the structure and evolution of entire galaxies. Additionally, certain theories suggest that as black holes rotate, they can distort space-time itself, resulting in oscillations called gravitational waves. These waves were initially theorized by Einstein's theory of relativity, 
and have recently been directly observed, offering compelling proof of black holes' dynamic nature. In 1963, New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr utilized Einstein's gravity equations to better explain a rotating black hole. Kerr demonstrated that instead of collapsing into a singularity as previously believed, a rotating black hole would form a fiery ring or a thin disk. This disk would spin so rapidly that centrifugal forces would prevent its collapse, forming what is known as the ergosphere, a zone around the black hole where conventional physics principles start to falter. Kerr's solution also intriguingly predicted the existence of an Einstein-Rosen bridge, commonly known as a wormhole. This theoretical construct is a passage through space-time connecting disparate areas of the universe or even parallel universes. The concept suggests that rather than being obliterated upon entering a black hole, one would traverse a tunnel through the fiery ring and emerge through a white hole in a parallel universe. To grasp this concept, it's crucial to delve into Einstein's space-time theory, which posits that space and time are intertwined, creating a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. Massive objects bend this fabric, generating a gravitational pull that attracts other objects. Imagine a sheet of paper representing space-time. If you mark two points on the paper and draw a line between them, you illustrate how objects traverse space-time. However, if you fold the paper and create a shortcut between the points, you mimic a wormhole, a swift connection through space-time, bridging distant points instantaneously. Wormholes aren't just a concept from science fiction. They are a prediction stemming from general relativity. While no one has directly observed them, this is because wormholes are inherently unstable and would collapse almost immediately. However, if an Einstein-Rosen bridge were to exist, it would suggest that black holes aren't just cosmic vacuum cleaners, but could also serve as gateways to other parts of space-time. Could we potentially use a wormhole for space-time travel? Unfortunately, the answer is likely no, at least not yet. Even if we could stabilize a wormhole, it's improbable that we could surpass the speed of light. Einstein's theory of special relativity sets the speed of light as an absolute limit for anything traveling through space-time. Nevertheless, the concept of wormholes and black holes as pathways to other regions of the universe or different periods has captivated physicists for years. The notion of potential shortcuts through space-time, enabling travel across vast distances or even into the past, could be groundbreaking if achievable. With each discovery about black holes, we come closer to unraveling their mysteries. Let's explore how advancements in ideas and technology are aiding our quest for knowledge in this area. The Kerr wormhole, a concept named after mathematician Roy Kerr, is a captivating subject in theoretical physics. Kerr's pioneering work involved using Einstein's gravity equations to describe this type of wormhole. Essentially, a wormhole is akin to a tunnel through space-time that could theoretically connect distant areas of the universe, different universes, or even disparate points in time within the same universe. People often envision the Kerr wormhole as a circular portal, reminiscent of the looking glass from Alice in Wonderland. Just as Alice entered a world with different rules by passing through the mirror, traveling through a Kerr wormhole could lead to a completely different universe or period where our familiar physical laws might not apply. This possibility of interstellar or time travel generates both enthusiasm and skepticism within the scientific community. The debate centers on the stability and safety of traversing such wormholes. Critics argue that Kerr wormholes might be inherently unstable, with potential hazards like intense radiation and extreme subatomic forces that could be lethal or disrupt the journey. They highlight that while Einstein's equations provide a basis for theorizing about these phenomena, they do not encompass the quantum forces influencing radiation and subatomic particles. This gap has prompted calls for a comprehensive theory of everything that reconciles general relativity and quantum mechanics, enabling a better understanding and prediction of phenomena like wormholes. Achieving this synthesis is a major goal in modern physics, representing a quest beyond academic curiosity. It seeks to unravel the deepest truths of the universe, potentially leading to new technologies and ways of engaging with the cosmos. Such breakthroughs could transform our comprehension of energy, space exploration, and perhaps even the fundamental fabric of reality itself.
Renowned theoretical physicist Michio Kaku has dedicated a significant part of his career to crafting a theory of everything, a comprehensive framework aiming to elucidate all physical aspects of the universe. This ambitious endeavor strives to unify quantum mechanics in general relativity, the foundational pillars of modern physics that appear initially incompatible. Among the proposed models for this unification, superstring theory stands out as the front runner. Superstring theory introduces the idea that fundamental particles are not mere points, but tiny, vibrating strings. These vibrations correspond to different particles, much like how different string vibrations produce musical notes. Superstring theory elegantly ties quantum mechanics and general relativity by suggesting that these strings, moving through space-time, can create complex structures like black holes and wormholes. A core aspect of superstring theory is its proposal of a universe with 10 dimensions, nine spatial and one temporal, which contrasts with our experience of three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension. Although the concept of extra dimensions seems implausible, it addresses many unresolved issues in physics. These dimensions may be compacted or curled in ways that make them undetectable with current technology. Visualizing these extra dimensions can be challenging, so physicists use analogies. For instance, imagine fish in a two-dimensional pond that cannot perceive height. They only experience the effects of the third dimension when rain falls, creating ripples. Similarly, we might indirectly sense extra dimensions through their impact on observable phenomena. Superstring theory posits that the universe's fundamental building blocks are minuscule vibrating strings. These strings oscillate not just within our familiar dimensions, but also through hidden ones, influencing energy and particles we can detect. The vibrations of these strings generate energy waves that propagate through these hidden dimensions, impacting the observable four dimensions and giving rise to particles with specific properties like mass and charge. One of the most intriguing implications of superstring theory is its potential explanation for gravity a force that has long puzzled scientists. However, the theory's reliance on extra dimensions presents a significant challenge since these dimensions are postulated to be incredibly small and beyond current detection capabilities. Despite these challenges, physicists are optimistic about finding indirect evidence of these extra dimensions. They suggest that anomalies in particle behaviors and forces might hint at their existence. For example, Extra dimensions might be tightly coiled into tiny loops or spirals, similar to how a sheet of paper rolled into a cylinder appears flat to an ant. According to superstring theory, the universe expanded in 10 dimensions during the Big Bang. As it cooled, the extra dimensions curled up, leaving us with the four dimensions we experience today. The theory's mathematical frameworks are complex and lead to new areas of exploration broadening our understanding of fundamental physics and challenging our conventional reality. Progress in applying superstring theory to practical investigations, such as quantum black holes, has been slow but promising. Notable physicists like Edward Witten have highlighted the theory's advanced nature. Recent discoveries show that superstring theory can resolve issues related to quantum black holes in two-dimensional models, energizing the scientific community. The hope is that further advancements will eventually address challenges across all 10 dimensions proposed by superstring theory. This could enhance our understanding of black holes and open possibilities for technologies currently seen as science fiction, such as intergalactic travel and time travel. However, for now, these remain speculative. Understanding superstring theory is an ongoing journey marked by small wins and significant challenges. Theoretical physics involves navigating uncertainties, particularly regarding the universe's origins. The excitement and frustration of this field lie in the balance between understanding fundamental rules and the difficulty of predicting specifics due to our incomplete knowledge of the universe's beginnings. The mysteries of black holes and their potential as gateways to other universes continue to captivate scientists. For decades, unidentified flying objects have danced at the fringes of scientific inquiry. But what if that's about to change? Recently released footage by NASA has reignited the debate, leaving experts scratching their heads. This footage, touted by former United States Air Force officer and intelligence official David Grush, 
hints at the existence of non-human vehicles within our midst. Is this definitive proof of extraterrestrial intelligence or something more sinister? Come along as we explore the implications of NASA's recent UFO footage and how it aligns with David Grush's unsettling theory. On June 20 to 21, Bill Nelson, the head of NASA, discussed UFO sightings with CNN. He expressed skepticism about the idea that these sightings were mere illusions. While he did not believe that UFOs were alien spacecraft visiting Earth, asserting he would be aware if that were the case, he found the reports from Navy pilots and other eyewitnesses highly intriguing. Nelson explained that there was uncertainty about whether the sightings originated from outer space, a foreign adversary, or a light phenomenon. Adding to this intrigue, investigative journalist Michael Schellenberger's recent revelations have stirred significant interest across the United States. Schellenberger's detailed research shows that intelligence officials have found an amazing 30 aircraft that are not from Earth. This matches what whistleblower David Grosch said about the U.S. government having various non-human vehicles. Schellenberger, who is known for his in-depth reporting, points out that this information comes from trustworthy sources within the government's Unidentified Aerial Phenomena UAP study programs. Schellenberger highlights that the people sharing details about crashed UFOs either saw the incidents themselves or had strong evidence to support their claims. Interestingly, this information is not only shared within secretive circles, Officials have also shared their findings with important groups like the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. However, when Congress tried to check David Grush's claims, the office said they didn't have verifiable information about recovered UFOs. This raises questions about whether the evidence is available or if there's a reluctance to confirm these claims. Schellenberger was surprised by what he discovered and highlighted the mystery surrounding the unfolding story. To understand what's going on, it's important to look at government rules, the programs studying UAPs, and how intelligence officers and groups that check these claims interact. As the country tries to figure out what these UFO findings mean, more people are asking for openness and a deep investigation. People have been fascinated by UFOs and aliens for a long time, capturing imaginations worldwide. Even though the government says they're not real, occasional sightings keep the belief in aliens alive. Those who talk about seeing UFOs often aren't believed, which lets the government keep its secrets. But things are changing, with whistleblowers speaking up and changing how people see this issue. People like David Grush, Ryan Graves, and David Fravor talk to Congress, challenging the government's denials and secrets. Even though the Pentagon quickly said Grush was wrong, other officials shared strong evidence, starting a big movement. Schellenberger was asked about where he got his information and said he didn't include everything in his report because it was so surprising. Now the big question is, how can we tell if a spacecraft is made by humans or not? Is it what it's made of, the materials used, or how it's built that makes the difference? This story also includes a big aerospace company trying to get civilian scientists and engineers involved in understanding these recovered UFOs. They thought sharing knowledge was key to coming up with new ideas especially when dealing with the tricky science and engineering of these unknown crafts. The Pentagon quickly said no to the idea, worried that expanding the program might risk keeping things secret. Schellenberger sources say these UFOs are real objects, not just something people imagine. This goes against what the Pentagon says, that the sightings are just mass hallucinations. These objects are said to be real and are kept in certain military bases and places where contractors work. Schellenberger thinks Congress can check if this is true by really committing to finding out. If they want proof, all they have to do is find and visit one of the places where these objects are supposed to be kept. The recent news makes it seem like we're getting close to finding out the truth about UFOs, but there's still a big question. Will the Pentagon share the secrets it's kept for so long? We'll have to wait and see if the details about these UFOs and what they mean will come out or if they'll stay hidden because of a government secrecy. The idea of finding proof of crashed UFOs on Earth is thrilling, making us wonder what happened to any aliens involved. Michael Schellenberger, who's well-known in UFO research, has looked into this mystery. He's heard from trustworthy sources about crashed UFOs, but only one source could confirm that the government has non-human things. 
Schellenberger, being careful, didn't share this publicly. He thought relying on just one source might not be smart and wanted to be sure there were UFOs in government hands before saying more. Talking about non-human things would be too shocking for people who are already trying to understand what UFO evidence means. Schellenberger emphasizes how tough it is for people to share inside info about UFOs. They worry about losing their access to secret info and maybe getting in trouble with the government, like what happened to David Grush. After Grush talked to Congress last year, some people didn't believe him, questioning if what he said was true. But when we look at the bigger picture, we see that Grush is just one of many whistleblowers linked to the government or government contractors. In the past few months, at least 30 people like him have come forward with similar stories. They've shared their info with important offices like the Office of the Intelligence Community Inspector General and the Defense Department Inspector General. Even former Navy pilots who talked with Grush are just a small part of all the stories that have come out. Mick West, who's known for doubting these things, admits that when lots of people independently say the same thing, it's more likely to be true. The fact that so many whistleblowers are speaking up challenges what we usually think about UFOs. But then Thomas A. Monheim, who's in charge of intelligence investigations, seemed to say something different in a letter to Congress in September. He didn't directly deny any investigations, wording his response carefully, leaving room for guessing if there are ongoing looks into these claims. Matthew Pines, an intelligence analyst, noticed something important. The official description of what the intelligence community's inspector general does includes looking into things. Since Monheim didn't specifically say they're not investigating, they may be still looking into these UFO stories in some way. The increasing number of whistleblowers doesn't automatically prove there are aliens or confirm a government conspiracy. They talk about different things, like strange aerial phenomena or possible problems in the program studying them. Around 30 to 50 government workers or contractors have gone to the DOD's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office to talk about these phenomena. Nick Pope, a well-known expert on these things who used to work for the UK's Ministry of Defense, points out that people are sharing their stories in different ways. Some tell the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program directly, while others go to the Department of Defense Inspector General, the Intelligence Community Inspector General, or even Congress. All this has led to people wondering if folks like Grush and other whistleblowers might be part of a plan by the U.S. government to spread false info. A former U.S. Air Force intelligence officer from Kirtland Air Force Base admitted to doing this from the 980s to the early 2000s. But there's doubt about whether this could happen through the Office of the Inspector General because there are big consequences for lying to Congress. If Grush or others were caught lying, they could go to prison for up to five years. This makes the situation more complicated and fits into the bigger picture of what's going on in Congress about these phenomena. Understanding the historical context of government disinformation campaigns related to UAPs is key to grasping the complexities of the current situation. In the past, there have been instances where accurate and inaccurate information were mixed, making it hard to figure out what's real about UAPs. Both skeptics and believers in UFOs agree that more transparency and openness are needed to stop fake info from spreading. The tension between doubting and wanting to know more shows how complicated talking about UAPs can be, especially for those trying to find real facts in this tricky field. But that's not all. In a recent event at Brandon Fugel's ranch, he, his brother Cameron, and Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes planned an experiment to investigate a mysterious triangle area. They intended to use a helicopter to drop weighted balls from heights between 1,000 and 5,000 feet, tracking the ball's paths and speeds with GPS to detect any anomalies. Initial tests at 1,000 feet revealed a signal at 1.6 gigahertz, but the experiment became challenging at higher altitudes due to strong winds, and they eventually lost GPS data. Despite these difficulties, they gathered valuable new data and discovered a UFO near their helicopter further adding to the area's mystery. Skinwalker Ranch, known for its high number of documented UFO sightings and other unexplained phenomena, gained attention in the 1960s and 1970s. Reports of UFOs in the Winter Basin and stories of mysterious events, including cattle mutilations, made the ranch famous. Brandon Fugel purchased the ranch in 2016 
to conduct scientific research into these claims following the previous owner, Robert Bigelow, who had also investigated the strange occurrences there. Fugel's approach involved rigorous scientific methods, attracting interest from those fascinated by the paranormal. However, skeptics like Robert Schieffer pointed out that reports of paranormal activity coincided with Bigelow's purchase, questioning the validity of the claims. Fugel denied any profit motives and maintained confidentiality until he went public with his research through the History Channel's oldest docu-series. UFO sightings have gained more credibility recently, with the Pentagon releasing documents and the establishment of the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force to investigate these phenomena. This shift in perception has led to a more serious consideration of UFO encounters, moving away from the ridicule and skepticism that previously surrounded such reports. The UAPTF, part of the Office of Naval Intelligence, aims to identify, study, and document UAPs that might pose a threat to national security. Historically, those reporting UFO sightings were often well-educated, white, middle-class males, many of whom were part of UFO enthusiast groups. Research has shown that believers in UFOs often have an interest in other paranormal phenomena, while skeptics have expressed concerns about the social and political risks of accepting unsupported beliefs. In the newest season of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, investigators are studying strange aerial phenomena about a mile above the Triangle area, with assistance from former U.S. military personnel involved in the Tic Tac UAP incident. Scientist Travis Taylor, connected to the program through Fugel, mentioned various unexplained events, including microwaves, radio waves, gamma ray radiation, ground shakes, and UFO sightings. Taylor emphasized the need for a methodical approach to testing hypotheses, despite the lack of a single clear explanation. Brandon Fugel remains optimistic about the future of UFO research, believing it will gain respect and validation. He sees the work at Skinwalker Ranch as crucial in uncovering the mystery surrounding these phenomena. On the other hand, historian Greg Agigian cautions against biases and emphasizes the need for consistent, critical examination by independent researchers. Area 51 is another famous place where many people claim to see UFOs. It's known for being very secretive, even to the Soviet Union, which spies on it every day. Area 51 is near Groom Lake, and has buildings made of metal, a very long runway of about three miles, and advanced radar and detection equipment. Over the years, Area 51 has been called different names like Dreamland, The Ranch, and The Skunk Works. It's a perfect place for testing new technologies that are top secret. This has been happening for many years. Area 51 is where pilots like Francis Gary Powers were trained and where the U-2 aircraft was developed. The famous SR-71 spy planes were also made here, and they helped find Soviet missiles in Cuba. Area 51 is very important for testing advanced devices related to stealth technology and CIA operations. It's located in the Nevada test site, which is surrounded by big deserts and mountains, making it very isolated. The few people who live nearby are usually conservative and patriotic, and they don't talk much about what happens at Area 51. There's a bar and grill called the Rachel Bar and Grill nearby, where some people who work at Area 51 go. They don't talk about what they do there. The bar attracts curious people who want to hear about strange lights in the sky, but nobody there gives clear answers. There have been rumors for a long time that Area 51 is testing alien technology in the Nevada desert. These rumors are linked to documents called Project Aquarius that UFO researchers have gotten hold of. The National Security Agency says Project Aquarius is real, but denies any connection to flying saucers. They keep it all very secret. In 1984, the Air Force took control of about 90,000 acres of land around Groom Lake, which led to questions about who had authority there. Congressman John Sieberling asked about this and got a strange answer, saying the authority came from a level much higher than the Air Force. Despite all the interest and rumors about aliens, the people who work at Area 51 never talk about alien technology or any secret information. In 1987, the Air Force tried to control the area even more, which made people talk again about mysterious alien spacecraft. National magazines quoted unnamed sources talking about these strange objects in Nevada. 
Although there were rumors, nobody who knew about Area 51 from the inside had ever talked openly about stories involving flying saucers. However, a mysterious dentist named Robert Lazar came forward with an intriguing live interview. He revealed that there were nine flying saucers from outer space kept at the location. Lazar, who used to be known as Dennis, shared this information to protect himself. He claims to have worked at a remote place called S4 near Groom Lake, where he saw advanced technologies like flying saucers and antimatter reactors, which are beyond what humans can do. Lazar firmly believes these technologies came from somewhere beyond Earth, even though it might sound strange. He stresses that he saw these things with his own eyes and thinks that our current knowledge couldn't create such advanced things. Checking Lazar's background has been hard. He says he has degrees in physics and electronics, but when we contacted the schools, they had no record of him. Lazar also claims to have worked as a physicist at Los Alamos National Lab, where he did experiments with a huge machine that generated 700 million volts. However, officials at Los Alamos say they don't know him, which is confusing. In 1982, there was a phone book listing Lazar as a physicist at the lab, and an article mentioned his work there, but despite all our searching, Los Alamos had no records of Lazar at EG&G, where he says he was interviewed for his job at S4. Lazar seemed to have vanished from official records, and there was very little information about his education, where he was born, or his previous jobs. He states he was employed by the United States Navy. According to him, government workers would assemble at Groom Lake, and then a select few, in buses with concealed windows, would travel to S4. There, they would encounter a distinctively designed structure, possibly crafted to avoid detection from satellites. Although Lazar did not fully grasp the nature of his duties, he observed advanced propulsion projects fueled by an antimatter reactor and gravity amplifiers. This propulsion system had two components seamlessly connected without physical links, utilizing gravity waves for navigation. While Lazar sometimes expressed uncertainty about his experiences, he recounted encounters with extraordinary technology in a secretive facility, unveiling a hidden realm of cutting-edge science. Even before witnessing them, Lazar held a fascination for flying discs. He noted subtle hints around the facility, such as posters resembling commercial prints scattered throughout. Lazar dubbed the model he saw as the sport model because it could hover about three feet above the ground in certain areas of the dry. At the establishment, Lazar encountered a disc labeled with the phrase, they're here. Later, he observed a sports model in action and observed a total of nine different craft in operation within a hangar. Security measures were stringent with armed guards carrying M16 rifles. Lazar underwent a polygraph examination to verify his claims, but the results yielded conflicting opinions regarding his truthfulness. The lie detectors couldn't be sure if Lazar was telling the truth because he was scared while he was at the facility. Some experts thought what he said was believable, but others wanted more tests to be sure. This story is about lie detectors, which are used to find out if someone is lying and the fear of lying, which makes the story more intense. It's connected to an amazing event, maybe one of the most important ever talking to beings from another place, proving that there are other intelligent creatures out there. This is a big discovery that got the main character interested. The main character, named Zar, was part of a big event, but he believed in what he saw. The technology and systems involved are much more advanced than what humans can make. But Zar isn't trying to get attention. He spoke up because he thinks there's a dishonest cover-up by the people in charge at S4. The story shows how tough it is to keep big secrets, but the people in charge are sure they can do it. The Navy is involved, but even Zar doesn't know who's running things. The story sets up the next part where more people will talk about the flying discs at the test site. The secrecy around UFOs isn't just in the United States. It's not just the US government keeping secrets. Surprisingly, there's a big global competition among countries like the US, China, and Russia to understand and copy alien technologies. This competition goes beyond borders, showing a complex mix of interests. The United States isn't the only one not sharing UFO info. China and Russia are also in a race to figure out and copy these advanced technologies. This global competition adds to the mystery of UFO secrecy with China also trying hard to be a major player in this high-tech race, 
to stay ahead globally. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.